Hello and welcome to Clumsy Crafting. I am your host, Bray Wright. Now today, unlike the previous videos, I'm not going to be teaching you how to make something from scratch. I'm going to be teaching you how to repair something you already have. Today we're going to be learning about hand sewing techniques, specifically techniques used to patch holes and re-sew on buttons. And my reason for teaching this, despite it not being the most traditional of crafts, at least in the way I think of crafts, is because just a lot of people my age don't know how to do it. In fact, multiple people in my classes told me, oh, that's cool, I don't even know how to sew on a button when I told them about the series. So I'm going to be teaching you how to do that today. Now I've just got this plain piece of cotton material. It's t-shirt material that was cut into a rag, so it's just plain white cotton, and I've cut a couple holes in it so that I can show you the different ways of patching up holes. I've also got a needle and thread, obviously because we are sewing. I have chosen color contrasting thread. Generally, you're going to want to choose color matching or similar colors. I've also got a nice pair of scissors. Generally, you would want, you know, fabric scissors or yarn scissors, but I don't really have those on me, so just a regular pair of scissors will work. And I've got a small piece of cotton that I will use to show you how to patch up holes and a button to show you how to sew on buttons. Now, unlike my previous videos, the size of your materials aren't going to matter as much. Generally, if you're repairing a rip or a tear in fabric, you're just using whatever you have on hand. Obviously, use your judgment. Don't pick anything that's going to be super obvious or ruin the fabric. But for the most part, a plain sewing needle and plain, plain thread will work perfectly fine on pretty much every piece of clothing. Now, I tend to end my sewing thread with a double knot on the end. Uh, it generally holds on to the fabric a little bit better than a single knot, and I've had fair instances of thread just ripping through fabric. But it is a bit more noticeable, and it is a bit more clunky to work with, so again, it's a judgment call. So I'm going to show you the most simple hand stitch you can do, and it's called a running stitch. It's also sometimes used as a basting stitch to hold two pieces of fabric together temporarily, but I'm going to show it to you as a running stitch. So what you're going to do is go through the back side of the fabric, generally the side that will be facing your body, and insert your needle, obviously. And then pull through until you reach the knot. Make sure that the knot does not slip through the fabric. And then insert your needle back into the fabric a little bit away from your first stitch. And there you're doing the running stitch. You just keep doing that. You insert the needle, and then you pull it out simple as can be. Now what you can also do for the running stitch is insert it, flip it around, and push it back through. You don't have to insert through both sides at the same time like I do. My method is a little bit easier, but if you find it harder or you want more control, you can do it the other way. And here we have a very simple line of running stitches. Now it's not super straight and they're not super even, but they will hold your fabric together. But because of how the running stitch works, there will be gaps wherever the stitches are and aren't on the different sides of the fabric. So it doesn't hold it completely together. Another issue with the running stitch is that it has the tendency to gather if it's pulled too tightly, uh, which I will show you. See how it kind of bunches up as you pull it? That's called gathering. Now, sometimes you want that, but generally if you're hand stitching to repair a piece, you don't. You generally want the fabric to remain flat and straight. So a running stitch does work, and it is very simple, but it does have its flaws. Now I'm just going to tie this off real quick. So just make a knot and then snip it, and then I'll show you how to do a back stitch. Now, as I re-knot my thread, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what a back stitch is. It's arguably one of the other most common stitches in hand sewing, and it's much stronger and a lot tighter than the running stitch. And that's because of the back stitch, you're going to go up and then back, which will create a bunch of overlapping loops, rather than the running stitch, which just goes straight through. It'll make more sense as you see it. So you're going to go in through the back again, Pull your thread tight and make sure that the knot doesn't slip through the fabric. And you're going to make a single running stitch 
a little bit away from where you insert it into the fabric. Now what you're going to do is insert, reinsert the fabric a little bit away from the end of your stitch. Pull it taut and then go back in at the end of your stitch so that your stitches touch each other. And that's how you do a back stitch. You might notice that I'm getting these little loops and bumps in my thread that tends to happen when you're hand sewing. Don't worry about it. Just pull it taut. It'll fix itself. And again, you're going to go up and through a little bit away from the end of your stitches and then insert right at the end of your previous stitch. Not only will this make a line of connected stitches, it will also make a line of connected stitches on the back. And this will make sure that both sides of your fabric are being held tight together. This would be much easier to see on two pieces of fabric. I'm obviously just doing one, but trust me, if you were to pull it apart and look at it, you would see that it's held together much tighter than your running stitch. Now, you might notice that my line isn't completely straight, and that's because I'm just doing this free-handed in the fabric. If you want a straight line, you can obviously go in with pencil or pen and draw a straight line to follow. You can also carefully follow the lines of the fabric. Now, if you look at your back stitch and you look at your running stitch, you'll notice that the back stitch is a lot shorter and it does take a lot longer to do. But it is also a lot sturdier for your sewing, so keep that in mind. Now I'm going to show you a cute little tip I learned for back stitching. Now first what you're going to do is pull up your thread, obviously, through the fabric. Then you're going to go in right by your previous stitch and insert your needle straight through the fabric so that it's coming out a little past where you've inserted your thread. And then just pull it. And now you've got a back stitch and your thread ready to go for another stitch. So you just go in again, push it all the way through the fabric, and pull it taut. Now this technique is really good for keeping your stitches about the same size. Uh, but if you start to go offline or your stitches become unstraight, it will become pretty obvious to you. Because obviously your needle will go straight even if your stitches don't. Um, which you can kind of see happening a little bit in mine. Uh, my thread is not directly over my needle. It's a little to the right, which means my stitch will be a little curved. But something to keep in mind while hand stitching is that 90% of people are only ever going to use it to fix small rips and tears. And those who use it for other things generally get a ton of practice in it. If you're only using it to fix small rips and tears, it doesn't really matter if it's perfect, so long as it holds the fabric together. That's the point of view I take of it. That's the point of view you might want to consider taking of it, if you do it. Now that's enough back stitches for right now. So we're going to flip the fabric and tie ourselves off. Now you can either knot it the way I knotted my running stitch, or you can go under the stitches and then knot it that way. Either way, just make a small knot and snip it. Now we're gonna work on patching up rips and holes. And obviously what the rip looks like and where it is determines what technique you're gonna use. So I've got these two longer ones to simulate rips and I've got this more circular tear to simulate a hole. So for this middle one, which is where we're gonna start, I'm going to teach you a whip stitch. Now it's also fair to think of it as sort of like a zigzaggy stitch because that is kind of the motion we're gonna do. So you're gonna go in through one side of the rip and then you're going to go into the other side slightly diagonal from where you first inserted the thread. So it'll be a little off center. It won't be a straight line. And make sure that you're inserting at least a, a little bit away from the edge of the rip just so that you don't accidentally tear the fabric more. So again, reinsert through the back and don't pull it super taut yet. And just go diagonal across the uh, tear. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way down. You're just going to do a series of diagonal stitches across the rip. And that's kind of why I called it a zigzaggy stitch, but it is also called a whip stitch. Now I'm going to speed up the video here while I finish patching up this rip real quick.
Now there is actually another way to do the whip stitch. You don't have to do the zigzag that I show you. And basically you go to the back side of the fabric, you hold the two sides of the rip together like I'm doing, and you sort of just keep sewing over in circles. Now this does involve keeping your sewing thread up straight because you don't want it to get pulled off to the side, but it will do the same thing as a whip stitch and it can be a little bit easier. It can also make the, the ends of your stitching a bit more obvious. So when you look at the sewing, you can kind of see that the ends are a little squished together on both sides. Uh, the side we started on is a little bit less obvious. The side we ended on is a little bit more obvious. You're going to have these squished together ends pretty much no matter how you do the stitching. That just kind of happens when you kind of force fabric to cover a rip. Uh, there are ways of getting around it, but they can be a little bit difficult to do, especially if you're just starting out. Um, but if you're doing the stitching on like a seam or somewhere where people aren't going to notice it a ton, it's not a bad way of doing it. And it will hold the fabric together pretty tightly. So yeah, it works. Uh, and again, I'm just going to knot it and snip it and then we can take another look at it. And there you go. You can kind of see the thread poking out. But again, generally, you're probably going to be using thread that's a bit closer in color. It won't be such a stark contrast. And you'll have those squished up edges, but if you're doing it on like a seam or somewhere where people won't notice, it's probably not going to be that bad. And it will hold your rip together, which is what you want. Now, the next stitch I'm going to teach you is the ladder stitch. And you've probably seen it a million times on 5-Minute Crafts and similar web videos. But it is a nice stitch, so I will teach it to you. And basically the point of the ladder stitch is you're going to make a series of straight lines going across the rip and you're basically going to do a running stitch on the sides. So you're going to insert the needle through, pull it taut, or well not taut, but pull it until it's covering the rip, and then go through on the other side and insert it. And you're going to want to make sure that your holes where you insert it stay lined up for the most part in order to create that ladder effect. And if you get it done the right way, then it will create an almost invisible stitching across the rip. Because this rip is a little bit curved, we are going to try to angle our stitches around the rip. Generally, if you angle it around the rip, it'll make it a little bit less obvious at the end that you've done some very, that you've done some stitching. There's going to be evidence that you've repaired a rip no matter what you do, but angling it around the rip can generally make it a little bit less easy to see. Similarly, as I get towards the end of the ladder stitch, I am going to start angling my stitches to form sort of a little pyramid triangle shape, and that will hopefully, again, make it a little less obvious that I've been sewing up a rip. You can't really avoid the evidence, but angling it in can help a little bit. Now, once you're done with your ladder stitch, you're basically just going to tug the thread until all of your stitches basically disappear into the fabric. And as you'll notice, I'm struggling a little bit with it. This is because my thread is a little bit old and my fabric is a little bit rough, so they tend to catch on each other a little bit. Um, if you notice that your thread is being difficult, you can do what I do and you can go on the back and pull up the stitches a little bit and then re-pull them that way. Uh, you're also going to want to be careful to avoid gathering the fabric like you do with a running stitch just because then it will be very obvious that you've patched up a rip. Um, and again, you've got those little divots on the side where you kind of squished in the fabric, but it's not super noticeable. And again, if you're doing this on a seam or somewhere where people won't see, it's pretty good. It'll hold your rip together, which is what you need. And again, just like all the other stitches, you're gonna tie it up and snip it off. Now, the last way of repairing a tear that I'm going to show you is patching up a hole, which is incredibly easy, and it's exactly what it sounds. You take a small patch of fabric, you put it behind the hole, you sew it next to the hole. It's so easy. And it uses the exact same techniques you've been using. So you just, you take the two pieces of fabric and you just start sewing. Now for this patch, I'm going to start with a running stitch 
When I get to the other side of the hole, you'll notice me using a whip stitch. This is because my patch wasn't really big enough and the edges were kind of close together and I wanted to make sure that the patch would hold. Um, and then a, after the whip stitch, I use a back stitch. Uh, generally, you're only going to use one kind of stitch while patching, but I wanted to show you that all three of them work perfectly well for what you're doing. And you don't have to use a patch or thread that's the same color as your fabric you can use a patch that's a different color or a pattern or a picture. You can use fun thread. You can do whatever you want to make it as fun and as nice as you want it. I obviously used a patch that's the same color and I used different colored threads that you could obviously see it, but you can do whatever you want. It's your fabric, it's your thread, it's your sewing. It's up to you. Now I'm going to speed through sewing the rest of this patch real quick, but once I'm done, we'll take a look at it. Alright viewers, so that was three ways of fixing up rips in your clothing. I don't particularly think that any of them were too hard, and while they're all a little noticeable in their own ways, they're also pretty easy to hide if you do them in the right spot. And once again, we're just going to tie it off and snip the thread. Now moving on to the last thing I want to teach you, which is how to sew on a button. And I'm going to teach you two ways of doing that. One of them is a much easier way that most people will probably prefer. One of them is a little bit harder, but it looks a little bit nicer and a little bit more like a factory standard button. So it's really up to you what you do. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your button and hold it up against your fabric. And then you're going to stick your needle through one of the holes on the button and run it across to the other side. And do that the same way with the perpendicular button holes. And you're gonna do this twice so that you've gone through both sets of holes twice. What's really important though is matching it to the other buttons on your shirt. So if instead of doing two stitches that are crossing each other, they do two stitches next to each other, do that instead. If it looks like they go through a couple times that they have really thick stitches, do that instead of just doing it twice. I'm just kind of giving you a general overview. And once you've finished going through the buttonholes, you'll have a sewn on button and it's really easy. And again, you're just gonna tie it off and snip the thread. Real simple and easy. Now this method of button sewing looks a little bit nicer, looks a little bit closer to factory standard, but it is a little bit more difficult and finicky, so just keep that in mind. And you're gonna do the same thing where you hold it against the fabric and go in through the buttonholes but you're not gonna pull any of your stitches tight. You're going to keep them very loose. Now, once you've finished and you've gone through both sets of buttonholes twice and you've still got your loose stitches, what you're gonna do is you're going to wrap the thread around the base of your stitches. Uh, and you can see I'm pulling it through the button, but I haven't pulled it through the fabric. So now I'm wrapping it around the base of the stitches and then I'm going to insert it into the fabric. And this will create a little gap between the button and the fabric, which will be, again, closer to factory standard type buttons. You don't have to do this. It's a little bit fancy. It's really unnecessary and extra. But if you do want your buttons to seem factory standard, that might be what you wanna do. And again, just like everything else, once you're done, tie it up, and snip it off. So today you've learned a variety of hand sewing techniques, including a running stitch and a back stitch. You've learned two different ways of sewing up rips and tears, and while they're not perfect, they will hold your fabric together, which is what you need. You learned how to patch a hole using an extra piece of fabric, and you learned two ways of sewing on buttons. I only had the one button, but you learned two ways of doing it. 
Anyway, I had a lovely time crafting with you, and I hope you had a lovely time crafting with me. This is Clumsy Crafting. I am your host, Bray Wright, and I hope you have a wonderful day.